السلام عليكم ورحمة الله This lecture about thrombosis and thrombophilia This lecture you should be able to know why thrombosis may occur what is thrombophilia how to diagnose thrombotic events like DVT and pulmonary embolism how to investigate a case of thrombosis how to manage thrombotic disorders thrombosis thrombosis is defined as coagulation within the circulation and this may occur in any part of the circulation inside the heart arteries veins and microcirculation in this slide we see both intrinsic and extrinsic pathway which represents the coagulation cascades and how they are working together to form a solid uh, thrombus uh, in case uh, of injury the extrinsic coagulation system pathway operate as the result of activation of tissue lipoprotein and these uh, lipoproteins usually released as the result of some mechanical injury or trauma the intrinsic system usually involves circulating plasma factors both together uh, come together at the level of factor 10 uh, uh, starting of the common pathway which is activated to form active 10 this in turn will promote the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin which is the key step in clot formation as active thrombin is necessary for the transformation of fibrinogen to a fibrin clot once a fibrin clot is formed and has performed its function of hemostasis mechanisms exist in the body to restore the normal blood flow by lysing the fibrin deposits circulating fibrinolysins performs this function plasmin digests fibrin and also inactivate clotting factors uh, factor 5 and active factor 8 and fibrinogen three naturally occurring anticoagulant mechanisms exist to prevent inadvertent activation of the clotting process these include antithrombin 3 or heparin antithrombin 3 protein c protein s and tissue factor uh, inhibition pathway in this uh, slide we uh, will see uh, on the right side the thrombus uh, it is a bladelet rpcs entangled inside the fibrin mesh what is the pathophysiology of thrombosis why thrombosis occur and how it occurs there is uh, something called the Verkau triad the Verkau triad identifies identifies the three underlying factors that are thought to contribute to thrombosis what these three factors hypercoagulability hemodynamic dysfunction or stasis and endothelial injury this slide shows uh, uh, risk factors for thrombosis is either visual wall defect as in atherosclerosis acquired thrombophilia or hereditary thrombophilia surgery or trauma to the uh, blood vessels estrogen or hormonal malignancy inflammation and immobility or stasis what is thrombophilia thrombophilia is tendency to blood clotting and thrombosis patient with hypercoagulable states or thrombophilia either acquired or hereditary are more likely to develop clots either venous or arterial than healthy individuals what are the causes that lead to venous thromboembolism or hereditary thrombophilia what is the hereditary thrombophilia the most important is factor 5 laden prothrombin 2210a 
prothrombin uh, protein C and protein S deficiency, antithrombin deficiency. This deficiency usually it is congenital, but sometimes it is acquired in different diseases, especially in liver disease and kidney disease. What is activated protein C resistance or factor V laden? This is the most common cause of hereditary thrombophilia. 5% of the general population are heterozygous for this, for this factor. Point mutation in the factor V gene in that locus results in resistance to inactivation of factor uh, 5A or active 5A by activated protein C and this will lead to thrombosis. Prothrombin G2210A uh, there is, here there is a, a transposition between two amino acids at nucleotide position of the prothrombin gene promoter which result in increased level of prothrombin thus increased thrombin generation protein C and protein S deficiency protein C it is a natural anticoagulant, usually inactivate factor 5 and factor 8, using protein S as a cofactor. Protein C deficiency may be homozygote, and this will lead to neonatal berbera pyminans, so it is diagnosed in uh, pediatrics. Heterozygotes, and this is the type we see in adult patients, which may be type 1 or type 2. Type 1 just decrease protein C level. Type 2 decrease protein C activity. Sometimes protein C is not congenital. It's acquired like in liver disease, in severe sepsis, in disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, and in warfarin therapy. One third of patients with warfarin necrosis have underlying protein C deficiency. Protein S deficiency. As you know, protein S is a cofactor for protein C. So deficiency of protein S will make protein C not working. There is three types of protein C, uh, protein S deficiency. Type 1, type 2, type 3. Type 1 decreased free and total protein S. Type 2 decreased protein S activity. Type 3 decreased the free protein S level. Acquired deficiency also present in severe liver disease in disseminated intravascular coagulopathy sometimes during the pregnancy and this may predispose to uh, uh, thrombosis during the pregnancy or in nephrotic syndrome and inflammatory condition and during warfarin therapy. All these conditions give acquired protein S uh, and also protein C deficiency. Notice that protein C and protein S and antithrombin 3 are decreased during acute cases of thrombosis. So avoid to test these proteins during acute thrombotic attacks. Wait until the condition subsides and the patient on no treatment and test for it. Otherwise, it may be falsely decreased. Antithrombin anti deficiency. Antithrombin 3 deficiency. Antithrombin slowly inactivates thrombin in absence of heparin and rapidly acts or rapidly inactivate thrombin in the presence of heparin. Congenital deficiency, it is autosomal dominant inheritance. Sometimes the deficiency is acquired and this will be due to Urinary loss as in nephrotic syndrome. There is two types, type 1 and type 2. Type 1, there is decrease antithrombin level. Type 2, decrease activity. Diagnosis must be made outside window of acute thrombosis, as we said before. And uh, also uh, away from anticoagulation treatment. We may suspect antithrombin deficiency 
during treatment of patients with heparin. If we find uh, resistance to unfractionated heparin, so this may be uh, there may be underlying antithrombin deficiency because heparin needs antithrombin to work. During the research, we found that sometimes venous thrombosis occur with persons with high factor eight levels, an independent marker of increased thrombotic crisp. Genetic basis for increased level poorly understood till now. Disorder of fibrinolysis include congenital plasminogen deficiency and tissue plasminogen activator deficiency. So sometimes when there is a disorder in the fibrinolytic, natural fibrinolytic pathway, uh, there will be tendency for thrombosis. One of the most important acquired uh, cause of thrombophilia is the antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. Clinically, it is composed of thrombosis, spontaneous abortion, fetal loss, premature birth before 34 weeks. Laboratory, you will find anticardiolibin antibodies, either IgM or IgG, and or lupus anticoagulants antibodies. How it makes thrombosis? Not well understood, but antibodies interact with platelet membrane phospholipids, maybe, causing increased adhesion and aggregation, can also interfere with the action of protein C and protein S. Diagnosis need more than one clinical finding and one more than or one clinical uh, laboratory criteria. So one clinical finding or one laboratory criteria. Although lupus anticoagulant prolong BTT, but it makes a, in the same time thrombosis. What is the causes of both venous and arterial thrombosis? Sometimes we find both arterial and venous thrombosis. Antiphospholipid antibody is uh, one of them. Myeloproliferative neoplasms, like polycythemia rubra vera or essential thrombocytemia, heparin induced thrombocytopenia, distal venous clot with patent foramen oval. So, unexpectedly, uh, threads will uh, detach from the thrombus and pass through the foramen oval to obstruct the arterial side. For whom high bar coagulability work up should be done? Work up for malignancy or high bar coagulable state indicated for idiopathic uh, venous thromboembolism in the presence of the following. If the age is below 50, or recurrent uh, venous thromboembolism, or if there is family history of venous thromboembolism, uh, especially in young age, unusual site of DVT like portal vein thrombosis, hepatic vein, mesenteric vein thrombosis, heparin resistance, you have to suspect antithrombin deficiency, warfarin induced skin necrosis, or Patient uh, considered for women with uh, venous thromboembolism within 12 months of uh, uh, taking oral contraception. You have to think about a hypercoagulable state. Thank you, and we will continue in part 